But something the Lord's been dealing with me lately and uh, something that He's placed on my heart. Specifically, I, I feel like, and I don't want to want to make it sound like, because I've dealt with in the past people who call themselves prophets and, and things like that and, and all those good things. And, and they come across and they give a general message that could basically reach out to anybody and act like they don't prophesy. So I don't want it to be like that. I, I don't want it to, to try to act like that. But I do believe that there are just a couple of individuals in this place, maybe more than that, that, that I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God. I don't know where you're at maybe with struggles and failures. or. But I just want you to know that the Lord loves you. I want you to know that, that the Lord loves you today. You know, I, I was sitting back there as we were worshiping, and, and I just I just felt it impressed upon my heart that, Lord, sometimes I just sometimes I forget how much you love me, Lord. And I I just want to know, Lord, that you love me. And I and I believe that some of you in here might be in that place to where you've seen some things going on, maybe you've struggled in your walk with God, maybe some things have happened in your life that you don't understand. And I want you to understand and I want you to know this morning that the Lord loves you. Amen. That God loves you. And I know that's a much preached message today. And, and some people don't even like that message no more in the church. But I'm here to tell you that God is love. Amen. And he loves his children. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to minister to you a message this morning. Um, and I had put a title on it. And it is... Privilege and power to exist as children of God. I want to go to John chapter 1 and verse 1. And the, the writer would write, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world... He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Let me read that again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become what it really should say is the children of God, because it's a word that could be translated sons or daughters, to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I'm here to tell you that God has given you, church, if you've been born again, that he's given you the privilege Amen. He's given you the privilege to become a child of God. That if you sit in this place today and you've been born again, that it's by the will of God. Hear what I'm saying. It's not the will of man. It's not the will of, of the flesh. It's not about blood or any of those things. But it's about the will of God that he's given to you the privilege and also the power. That word in the Greek is, uh, is exousia. It's exousia. And it, and it has a twofold meaning. It means that he's given you authority. But he's also given you the capability to live as a son or a daughter of God. He's, he's filled you with the power, the power of his Holy Ghost. And what you've got to understand today, what you've got to know today is that you have a privilege. Amen. Amen. That you have a privilege today. That you've come into existence as a son, as a, as a daughter of the Most High God. And the reason that is, is because God so loved the world. Do you hear what I'm saying? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will. Whosoever will, we see right here, whosoever would receive of him, whosoever would believe on him, whosoever would look to him, amen, look to the cross and live, amen, look to the blood of Jesus Christ and live. And I'm here to tell you today that he loves his children. I want to encourage you today that God is a God who loves his children. So many times, and even, even recently, even recently, I, 
you know, so many times we, we go through a roller coaster with our relationship with God. I know I'm not the only one in here. We find ourselves in extreme highs and sometimes we find ourselves in extreme lows and then all of a sudden God shows up and He picks us up again and we're on the mountaintop and we thank God I'll never hit that low again. And the next thing we know, we're right back in the low again and we're saying, God, where are you? What happened? What have I done? Where have I gone? What have I looked to? What's going on, Lord? I don't understand why it is that way. But what I do know and what I do believe is that even in the midst of that, in the midst of the lowest of the lows, one thing I've found out about the Lord is that He's always showed up. Amen. He's always showed up in the nick of time, and He's always proven Himself to me over and over again. Even when I, you know, sometimes I, I've been walking this thing now, I don't know, eight to ten years, and then I've seen the Lord do some mighty things in my heart and in my life, and I've seen some great victories and some great triumphs over some things in my life, some struggles, uh, some different sins uh, and, and things like that in my life that I've seen the Lord giving me victory over. And, and I'd be on a mountaintop and then all of a sudden out of nowhere I would see that thing just rise back up. It had been gone and, and forgotten about it. And I had thought that, you know what, finally this time I had, I had made it past that thing. Finally this time I had the victory over that thing and all of a sudden that thing would attack me again. That same sin that had so easily beset me so many times that I had thought that this time I, I found the victory. This time I've made it. This time I'm over that hill. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, have you ever just had one of those times where out of nowhere, where you was doing, everything was going so good and everything was going so great and you were walking in a spiritual place and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, things on the inside of you begin to go into turmoil. When things on the inside of you begin to raise up and you begin to wonder, what's going on? What have I done wrong? Where, where have I gone in the wrong direction? What's taking place? And, and all of a sudden, failure is right back there again. And, and your mind is, is going all over. But have you ever, am I the only one that's ever been in that place, that's ever found myself in that situation? And you begin to be so miserable and, and you begin to feel so low because the very one who's delivered you so many times, he's delivered you so many times, you find yourself in the position again that you felt him again. That you felt him again and once more you're crying out saying, Lord, I need you to deliver me. Well, Lord, I need you to, to set me free. Lord, I need you to, to give me the victory. Well, I'm here to tell you that the same one that gave you the victory the first time, that he's the same one that will give you the victory today. The one who loved you when you didn't have victory, and then you found the victory, and then you fell over again. I'm here to tell you that he's the same one that loves you today. He's constant. He's never changing. He's never wavering. Amen. You and I, we waver, and we go back and forth, and we fall down, and we struggle. And I'm not making excuses. I'm just facing reality for what it is. You can think I'm just making excuses or whatever you want. I'm just telling you, this happens to me. This happens to me. Not too long ago, not it, just within the last couple of weeks, I'm talking about my mind has been bombarded, my heart has been bombarded with things that I thought I had complete victory over, things that I thought were far behind me, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, the Lord had been showing Himself to me mightily, the Lord had been revealing Himself to me mightily, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was like I fell off the mountaintop and I was right back down in the valley again. And this time it just seemed like the valley was even deeper than it was before. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord is mighty and He loves His children. And I want you to understand and know that He's not looking to kick you out of the kingdom today. He's looking to teach you something. He's looking to show you something and He's looking to prove Himself mighty. To you, He wants you to know and understand today that you have the privilege, the authority to call Him Father. Amen. And also you have the ability inside of you because of the Holy Ghost, because of who Christ is and what Christ did. You have access. Understand what I'm saying. You have access to all the power that you have need of, all the dunamis that you have need of to live this life and to live it in a way that's more abundant, to live it victoriously in right relationship with God. I'm here to tell you that you have that on the inside of you. But it's important you, it's important that we understand it's never because of us, but it's always despite of us or in spite of us, whatever the word is. I might be saying two different words and mixing it up, but you know what I'm saying. It's never because of us, 
And I think that's one thing that we often have to be reminded of in our walk with God. That it was never because of us. Amen. But it was always because of Him. Amen. And sometimes we get in a place with our walk with God that when things start going real good, and we begin to think that it was because of us. And I think that happens to each and every one of us that we get into a place to where we think it was because of us. And all of a sudden we find ourselves back on the floor, if you will, in that valley. And we realize and remember, amen, we remember that, was in, that it was in spite of us. That was, it was regardless of who we were and what we was that He loved us because God is love. And because He made a decision to love sinful, fallen humanity. He made a decision to make a way for you today. I'm here to tell you that. And I want to encourage you in that today that God has made a way. He's called you sons and daughters of the Most High God. He, he's called you His seed. Amen. And I want to encourage you to walk in that today. I want to encourage you not to forget about that today. I want to encourage you not to give up on that. The words exesti and exousia combine the two ideas of right and might. That's what he's given you. He's given you the right and he's given you the might. Amen. He's given you the right to be called a son or a daughter of God. That's not something that you've done on your own. That's not something that you've worked enough to get. That's not, you can't do, feed the homeless in New Orleans enough time to gain the right to be a son or a daughter of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? You can go to the nursing home seven days a week. 365 days a year and sing gospel songs and preach the word of God and you'll never gain the right to be a son or a daughter of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. You've gained the right to be a son or a daughter of the most high God because God loved you. Because he sent his only begotten son to shed his blood on Calvary's cross. While you were yet a sinner, he loved you. While you were yet lost and undone. While you were yet just like Lazarus, all stinky. Amen. Like, like Lazarus' sister. Let alone, Lord, he stinketh. Lord, he stinks. Don't, don't roll the rock away. And the Lord, he looked down and he knew that you stunk. He knew that you was no good. He knew that there was nothing in and of you that he could use. Amen. But he said, I love them anyway. Yeah. I love them anyway. I'm going to save them anyway. I'm going to set them free anyway. And I'm going to do it all to the glory of my name. Amen. Amen. He gave you the right. When you sit here today and you leave or you leave here today, I want you to understand. And I want you to remember, and it's important for you to remember because it's important so many times for me as a preacher to remember in spite of my failure, in spite of my weakness and my frailty, like that song said, I'm weak and I'm poor. But all I have is yours, Lord. Yeah, I'm weak and I'm poor. And that's what I am. And that's the truth of the matter. But Lord, all I have is yours. And I want you to understand that we're all in this boat together. And whether we like to admit it, I know some of y'all are a lot better than me and I know y'all feel like that, but that's okay. <laughs> But the reality of the matter is, is you're really not. Amen. That we're all in the same situation. Right. We're all in the same boat. And we have different things that bombard our minds and bombard, bombard our hearts. And, and at times we have different situations that bombard our lives. But when it's all said and done, it's important that we continue to remember that God has given us the privilege yes, thank you, Jesus. to be a son or a daughter of the Most High God. And I want you to remember that privilege that He gave you, He's not just looking to snatch it away. He's not just looking to snatch it away, church. He doesn't just want to take what He's freely given to you and take it away. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that He won't take it away. Amen. Preacher, you preach it once saved, always saved. No, I'm preaching God doesn't take away what He's given. You can leave it. Amen. If you so desire and you so allow that to take place, you can make that conscious decision, but I'm here to tell you, I don't think it's very easy. That's right. I don't think it's as easy as what the old school Pentecostals used to make it back in the day. That's right. I remember when I was younger, Robert, I was, I was scared if I messed up and didn't repent enough, quick enough, I was going to hell or something happened. I'm talking about, and I've, I've met people in the church who believe that if you, if you sin or you have, a, say, you have an argument with your wife and you walk out the door, I know you've all heard this analogy, and you get hit by a car, that's your only way to hell. 
I'm here to tell you that salvation doesn't work like that. That's right, God. Salvation doesn't work like that. Amen. Him calling us a son or a daughter of, of himself doesn't work like that. This that he give, has given us is a free gift. Do you understand that? It has been paid for and bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It has been settled in heaven. It's been paid for. It's been bought. It's been purchased with the, with the precious blood of the Lamb. And I'm here to tell you today, I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you did this morning. I don't care what's been going on in your mind. I don't care what's been going on in your heart. I just want to ask you today, do you still believe? Do you still believe that you're a son of God? Do you still believe that you're a child of the Most High God? Do you still believe that He's paid for you, that He's bought you, that He's purchased you with the precious blood of the Lamb? Do you still believe that? If you still believe that today, I don't care what's taking place. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how far you've fallen or how much you've messed up or, or what's taking place in your heart or in your life. I'm here to tell you that God loves you still. And He still desires to do a work in your heart. And in your life. And I want to encourage you today that you keep holding on. And that you can keep believing that. In Ephesians chapter 1. I want to look at a few scriptures to back that up. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He's given you right and He's given you might. Remember that. He's given you the right and He's given you the might. Everything that you have need of, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself. According to the good pleasure of his will, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. How? Through what means? Through what means did he do this? By Jesus Christ. Amen. By Jesus Christ. This took place not because of how good you were, not because of how beautiful you thought you were, but all because of who Jesus is and what Jesus did. He made a way, amen, where there was no way. I know this is elementary, Watson. I know this is elementary. Everybody knows this, but sometimes we need to hear it over and over again. Sometimes, we, sometimes, Brother Troy, I need to hear it. Sometimes I need to tell myself and I need to encourage myself in the Lord that, you know what, despite what What's going on in your mind, despite what's going on in your heart, despite what's going on in your life. Remember when he showed up and he saved you when you was a mess. Remember when you was way worse off than what you are now. Remember all those things that you used to do, but yet he loved you and he showed up and he called you out of darkness. What makes you think that he's going to abandon you now? What makes you think that he's going to leave you now? When you're a son or a daughter Hallelujah. of the Most High God, where he's given you the privilege the authority to stand up in the name of Jesus Christ and call him Father when he's given you access into the throne room of grace by the blood of Jesus Christ. What makes you think now that he just wants to abandon you? What makes you think now that he's closed the door? So what? Maybe you just got to keep knocking. Amen. Maybe you just got to keep seeking. But I'm here to tell you like the book of Matthew says that he's a good father. And if us being wicked fathers... Wicked mothers know how to give our children good gifts. How much more Hallelujah. is your Father in heaven yes, willing to answer and give you the good gift that you're asking for? Willing to give you what you have need of? Do you need victory in your life today? Amen. Do you need to take a step forward in your relationship with Him today? Do you need something on the inside of you that's been missing? Do you need something mentally to take place in your mind to fix you, to get you right? I'm here to tell you to keep knocking, to keep seeking, to keep asking because He's a good Father. And I'm here to tell you that He's your Father. Amen. He's your father. Well, Troy, there's a song, and I've, I've probably been, every time I come over here, I've been talking about it, but I just can't, that song, Good, Good Father, I just can't get over it. I can't listen to it enough. I just can't listen to it enough and, and just be reminded of how good of a father that he is. Uh, of how good of a father that he is, that he would love and save a wretch like me, that despite myself, despite of what I am, despite of what I've been for 30, I don't know, 37, 38, somewhere getting close to 40 now years. I'm not near as old as Matt, but, <laughs> but somewhere, somewhere getting up there that he's, he loved me, despite of me, and he saved me. Despite of me, though I've failed him, though I've wronged him, though I've many times I shook my fist in his face, 
as he tried to reach into my heart and, and draw me to him, I, I, I spiritually speaking would shake my fist in his face and I would continue to go in an opposite direction. And yet he continually, though I was going in the opposite direction, he kept coming after me. Hallelujah. He kept chasing me down no matter where I was at. And like David said, if I made my bed in hell, that he's there. That he's there looking to, to, to restore me, looking to bring me back into a right relationship with him, looking to cleanse me and to wash me and to forgive me of my sins because he's a good father. Amen. Oh, he's such a good God, church. He's such a good, good God. I think all of us can look back on our lives and, and see many times when I deserved or you deserved the Lord to leave us. But he hasn't left us yet. Yeah. Hallelujah. He hasn't left us yet. Despite us, he hasn't left us yet. And I'm so thankful yes, Lord. that he hasn't left me. I'm so thankful that he's yes. still here for me yes. today. Amen. I lost my verse here. Okay. He said, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein, in his grace, he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He had purposed in Himself. Listen to this. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ. Everything, it was always his intention, always the mystery of his will to gather everything that would be gathered. He'd gather it together in the person and the work of Jesus Christ and make it all acceptable unto himself. Do you get that? Do you understand that? That in Christ you're acceptable to God. That in Christ you're pleasing to God. When I was out uh, Thursday at the doing the homeless ministry and getting set up and there was this guy walked up to me and uh, I don't know what he was out there doing but he came and he, he said I'm prophet so and so. Well right off the bat I said well let me be let me watch out about this. <laughs> and he started I don't know if you've ever had people doing that to me to you but he just started I guess giving me his word or whatever it was but he said the Lord is pleased with you. And whenever he's finished, I let him talk and I said, yeah, brother. I said, I know he's pleased with me. I said, you know why? Because I'm in Jesus. Amen. Because I'm in Christ. He's amen. pleased with me. And I'm here to tell you that as long as you get up today, amen. Or, or like Brother Larson, I heard him say one time, he said, I don't care what you've done today. He said, I don't care how far you've fallen or how much you've messed up. He said, how much the enemy has had a foothold in your life today, how much failure you might have found. And I'm not encouraging failure. And I think you all understand that and you all know that, but we're just facing the reality is that you know what? Failure happens. Amen. Failure happens in my life and it happens in your life. And that's just a fact of the matter. And if you say it don't, then you're lying and you're failing right now. But God still loves you. Amen. He still loves you. But like Brother Larson said, I don't care how far you've fallen or, or what's taking place in your life or how you messed up or how you went in the wrong direction. But if you can lay your head on that pillow tonight and you cry out to God and say, God, I still believe. I know I've been a fool today, Lord, and I know I've messed up and I've gone astray and I've done all these things wrong, Lord, but I still believe that Jesus is enough for me. I still believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has given me access into your throne room to have your mercy and your grace in my time of need. I still believe what he said is you won today. You're a winner today. You're in victory today, whether you know it or don't know it, whether you understand it or don't understand it. Because of who Jesus is and what Jesus did, I'm here to tell you that you're accepted by the Father, that you're called beloved in the beloved. Do you understand that today? Don't forget that. Don't forget that no matter what comes your way because things are going to come and things are going to happen and things are going to go wrong many times. Amen. And, and you're going to have to remember, you're going to have to be like David and encourage yourself in the Lord. And that's what I'm trying to do today is to give you something to encourage yourself about that in Christ Jesus, amen, you're accepted yes. in the beloved and he's called you a son or a daughter of the most high God. He said that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. 
being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Do you get that? Yes. Do you get that? That he's placed in you a down payment. Amen. I'm talking about it's a good down payment. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a good down payment. This that he's placed in us, this, this promise, the promise of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Have you ever been in a place to where everything was just all messed up? Yes. Everything was, whether you messed it up or somebody else messed it up or something just bad happened and you was just, it was a mess. And all of a sudden, from the inside of you, something began to happen. A peace and a comfort began to flood over you. A peace and a comfort began to rise up and despite everything, you just knew everything was going to be all right. I share it so many times. I remember when I first came to the Lord. And I think I shared it last time or one of the times before that I was over here. But just like most of us, many times we find our we, we come to the Lord and we find ourselves in a place of destruction. Amen. Most often those are the, the ones who find themselves finally turning into turning to the Lord when they really come to a place of destruction. And that's what my life had become. It had become destruction. Everything around me was just a mess. I'm talking about everything. It was just all messed up. And I was on the verge of losing my home and couldn't pay my bills and, and I just all kinds of stuff. But you know, I didn't come to the Lord because of any of those things. In the midst of those things, I saw myself for what I was. I realized that all those things, the reason that they were like that was because I was a mess. Because I was bound by sin. And I was separate from God. And all those things had been put on the back burner and then I was dealing with me. It was me who was being dealt with. And I and I surrendered my heart to the Lord. And I remember in the months that followed that, that I mean, I remember um, my wife telling me that people were out taking pictures of our house and, and things like that. And, and, I, and I know now that what was going on is they was getting ready to repo and, and put it up in the newspaper and all that good stuff. And, and um, I have to tell you that during all those times, there was no concern. There was no worry. There was no fear. I was like a little child in the hand of the Lord. My relationship with Him was so fresh and, and so new. And there was just something on the inside of me. And I know it was the Holy Ghost. And He was just always telling me, Son, it's going to be all right. Amen. He would tell me, just trust me. It's going to be all right. And my yeah. wife would tell me, why aren't you worried? Why aren't you concerned? And I would tell her, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just can't explain it to you. But I just know that everything is going to be all right. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I know that regardless of what happens, that, that, that my relationship with God is the most important thing. And whether he <laughs> saves my, my, my house and I get to keep my house or whether or not that I'm living on the streets or whatever, he's going to make a way and everything is going to be all, all right regardless of what happens. Regardless if I keep everything that I have or everything goes away, that everything is going to be all right. And that was how it was in my early walk with God. But don't you know that sometimes when we begin to think that we mature in Christ, that we really find out that we've left our first love that we've lost that childlike trust that childlike dependence to where we're just trusting and believing that you know what despite everything that goes on everything is going to be all right everything is is going to be all right and and I, I kind of felt I know it's a little different circumstance but I kind of felt like the the uh Daniel in the lion den or, or maybe Shadrach Meshach and Abednego where they said okay whether our God saves us or he don't say, we ain't going to bow down to you and everything's going to be okay. That's kind of how I felt on the inside. Just like there was just a, 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 a burning comfort that I just knew everything was going to be all right. 
And I'm here to tell you that if you're in the midst of that situation, if you cry out to your, your heavenly father, no matter what it is that comes to torment you, no matter what it is that begins to break you down and causes you to feel like everything ain't going to be all right. I'm here to tell you that if you've been born again, that you have the privilege, that you have the privilege, that you have the right Amen. To call out to God, to cry out to him and realize and know that he's going to show up. And not just that he's going to show up, that he's already in the midst of that situation right, with right. you. And regardless of whatever happens, that your God is going to provide for you, that he's going to take care of you. I'm not telling you that he's going to give you a big fancy car or some job making all kinds of money or all these things. I'm here to tell you that he's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. And that regardless of what it is, that he's going to give you peace and comfort in the midst of the situation to trust him and to believe. Even if you end up like the Apostle Paul and you're facing the guillotine. And the Apostle Paul said, whatever happens, whatever it is, he said, I'm ready to be poured out as a sacrifice, a sweet sacrifice to my God. He had come into a place, into a position in his walk with God, in his relationship with God, that his the childlike trust that he believed that no matter what, because of Christ, who he was and what he did in his walk with him, his relationship with him, he, he believed that no matter what, no matter what took place, as long as it was the will of God, that everything was going to be all right. Amen. And I want to tell you this morning, that no matter what you're going through, maybe it wasn't the will of God that got you in the situation that you're in. But I'm here to tell you that it's not too late to find the will of God that caused you to rise up in that situation. Or let me rephrase that, to cause the spirit of God to rise up and give you the peace and comfort that you need in the midst of that situation. You're a child. You're a son. You're a daughter of the most high God. Look, I'm, I'm almost done with you. I'm almost done in Romans 8. 14 through 17, he says, the apostle says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That you're able to call Him Father in an intimate, personal way. That you're able to call Him Father and realize and understand that He's going to show up and that He's going to make a way. When there seems to be no way that in the midst of it all, no matter what it is, your home might be falling apart. Your family might be falling apart. Your own walk with God might seem like it's falling apart. But I'm here to tell you that if you won't quit and you won't give up, maybe you just need to knock and seek a little more than what you've been knocking and seeking. And he's going to show up in the midst of all that. And I believe with all my heart that he'll show up and he'll take care of his children. And he might not give you what you want. But he's going to give you what you have need of Amen. when it comes time. Yes. That you can believe in that and you can trust in that. Amen. Amen. Last night, and I'm not going to give an altar call when this is all said and done. If anybody needs prayer, you can come up and I'll pray for you. But I want to share with you last night, I was, I was sitting down and I was sitting on my, on my chair. And uh, I was listening to some worship music and Really just, like I said, I had a hard time finding the mind of the Lord on this. Um, and I was just thinking about today and really just looking at some scriptures. And I was sitting on my chair. And my little nine-year-old son, he came and crawled up on my lap and he sat with me. And usually he wants to sit with his mama. He always wants to sit with his mama all the time. But his mom was sitting on the couch and I was sitting in my chair and we had put on a a movie for him to watch and he came and climbed up and he sat on me and, and I was kind of uncomfortable because I was trying to study a little bit and my wife I think she saw that because she, she said you want to come sit with mama why don't you come sit with me and he was like he said no and I put my arm around him and I began to sit there and as I was sitting there I was listening to music and that song good good father came on Hallelujah. and I was sitting there and I was holding my son and I began to think just ponder on my relationship with the Lord. And I thought to myself, I said, Lord, do you love me like this? Because I, I love this kid so much. And I began to think about all three of my children. I said, Lord, I love these kids so much that I would give my life for them without even thinking about it, that I would, I would jump in front of a bullet without even 
thinking about it without even ever thinking. I've got to be honest. I don't know if I'd do that for you. I don't know if I'd even do that for my, my father, my mother, my brothers, or my, my brother or my sisters. I don't know if I'd do that for any of them. But as I was holding my son, I, I began to think and I thought I would do that for him with a heartbeat. Without even thinking about it, I, I'd give my life without even thinking about it. And I, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, do you, is this how you feel about me? Do you, do you love me like this? Do you care about me like this? And I began to think and I began to wonder. I, and I thought to myself, I wonder if he feels safe sitting right here. I wonder if he feels like everything is going to be all right, like, like he's protected sitting right here. And as in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking all these things. And, I, and I'm, in my mind, I'm talking to the Lord. And I'm talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, will, will you hold me like this? I told you the last few weeks in, in, my, in my heart and in my mind, it's been kind of, things have been a little rough. And I said, Lord, will you hold me like this? Will you wrap your arm around me? I need to know. I need to know. I need to know, Lord, that you still love me. But in the midst of all that, the Lord began to remind me of each and every situation, of each and every time that he showed up. And, he, and, and, and I felt like he just impressed it upon my heart. And he said, I love you more than you even love this child. I love you more than you even love him. And I want you to know that he feels the same way about you today. That he loves you more than even the children that you have. Or if you can think about the person that you love more than anything in this world, he loves you more than that. Stand with me this morning. He began to just remind me of all the so many times that he showed up. All the so many times that I've been broken, that I that I thought that everything was a mess and that everything was over with and that that God could never love me. He began to remind me of every single time that he showed up in the midst of that. And he began to remind me of so many times where he wrapped his arms around me just like I I had my arms around my son last night and I, I began to think about multiple times. I remember times where I began to be convicted over sin and just feel like a low life and just so rotten and dirty and filthy. And I'd be kneeling. I remember times coming home from work and, and the conviction over sin and I'd kneel at my couch and begin to weep before the Lord. And His presence would show up and, and the conviction and all those things. And then all of a sudden, just like a flood, all that would just wash away. Yes, Lord. And I could just feel His arms wrap around me and let me know that He loves me today. And I want you to know today that He loves you. Yes. If you need prayer today, come up. We don't need no music or any of that stuff. If you need to know this morning, if maybe you're going through something and you just need a touch from the Lord, We'll pray for you. We'll lay hands on you like the Word of God says. And we'll pray for you. But I just want you to know today, I want you to be encouraged in the Lord that He loves you. That He sent His only begotten Son to shed His blood for you. Romans 5 and 8 said that God proved His love for you. And that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. That He sent His only begotten Son shed his blood so no matter what you're going through today no matter what you might have experienced in your life and your walk with God whatever situation it may be whether it's family matters whether it's sin whatever it is if you've been born again today I want you to know that God loves you and that you're a child of God and that when you need him he'll wrap his arms around you and he's always willing and always ready to hold you close to him amen